Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. It is the last Saturday in March, and that means here in Northern California, it is the opening day of turkey season, and uh, it's only about 8.30 in the morning, and I am back home. Got this beautiful young bird, the tail on. It's a one-year-old turkey. Um, this is a Jake, he has a very, very small beard, has a beautiful head. Um, I was actually out, a couple firsts this morning. I was actually out above uh, town here, out on some public land, and uh, heavy snow on the ground. I never called in a turkey in the snow, but I was like, hey, what the heck? I'll go out there, give it a try. If nothing else, get some exercise. Well, I located some birds on the roost, and uh, I was determined if I did locate some birds, that I was gonna call them using nothing but my mouth. And uh, hey, I got it done. I was actually, couldn't sit down. I was in about two feet of snow. Um, There's a little kind of a, a mud road down below me. And uh, I thought there was a chance that they would come strutting up the road. If I sat down, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get a clear shot at the road. So I was forced to stand behind a pine tree. And you know, turkeys are very, very wary. Um, so before they, flew down, I determined that there was a bird directly in front of me. Um, and then there were some other birds kind of off to the side, maybe 40, 50 yards away. So long story short, um, I made some turkey noises with my mouth. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of show you some calls and stuff in a second, but I'll, I'll tell you the story first because I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty stoked. Um, so I made some turkey noises with my mouth. I, I, I gave him a little bit of this kind of action. I just, just ah, no mouth call, no nothing. I was just like, tick, 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 tick. gobble, you know. So now they know where I am. That's tip number one if you're an aspiring turkey hunter. If you get one to gobble on the roost, clam up. They know where you're at. They know right where you're at. So I waited and I, I heard them get a little more excited and then they shut up. So I knew they were on the ground. So then I gave him a little, a little more robust I am. Got a gobble. I clammed up, five minutes went by, 10 minutes went by. I went like this, I just peeked out around the tree with one eye. There's a big beard bird, maybe 60 yards away, right in front of me. I don't know if he saw me. He was kind of quartering towards me. They're very wary, so I just kind of, kind of get back behind a tree. <laughs> And I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. 10 minutes goes by, 15 minutes goes by. Peek back out, he's gone, gone. So he either saw me a little bit, got spooked, or maybe he just decided to go over there. I mean, they're birds. Um, so I waited another few minutes, and I heard a faint gobble, like over here. So I gave him like three or four yelp times. and uh, got a gobble, waited a few minutes. I hit it again a little bit harder, louder. It's coming my way. And tip number two for you aspiring turkey hunters out there, they're always closer than they sound. <laughs> so I knew better than to move. He sounded like he was a couple hundred yards away, but I expect he was more like 50 yards away. There's a lot of heavy cover over there. So I decide I'm gonna try to close the deal here. So I give him, give him something like this, I give him something like, Double gobble. He's hot. Okay, I'm done talking. I'm not. I'm not talking to him anymore. <laughs> so, um, got my shotgun ready. I'm just standing there, just moving my eyes. And uh, sure enough, here he comes. And he's walking down, kind of coming towards this downed log. And now I know on the backside of the log, the snow had melted. So there's kind of a kind of a hole there. But he didn't like the looks of that. There's this long branch. He jumps up on it, and he kind of goes like a man on a tightrope. He sticks his wings out comes off of that, hops back on the snow, crosses behind a tree, and when he comes out, he's 35 or 40 yards away, and uh, I gave him a little kind of an alarm call. I just go, Kip! and he craned his head up, and uh, that was it. He was he was done for. Um, so I'll give you one last look at the bird here, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about my gear, about what I was using, what I was doing, what I usually carry, stuff like that, because I know there's a lot of guys out there that are interested in turkey hunting, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's not easy. It's not the hardest thing in the world either. But uh, I taught myself how to do it. I've been at this for like 30 years now and uh, it's just a lot of fun, man. It's a chess game out there in the woods. So anyway, here's my bird. He is a Jake. 
Um, he probably weighs, I don't know, 13, 14 pounds whole and uh, got a funky little beard there. You know, if I was on private property, I probably wouldn't shoot a bird like this, but uh, any bird, any bird you can get on public land is a trophy. So let's talk a little bit about, well, first of all, what am I gonna do with that turkey? Um, if it was a big, giant, you know, 20 plus pounder, I'd probably skin him out, put him in a, one of those Reynolds wrap turkey roasting bags, cook him whole, just like at Thanksgiving, okay? Um, and, and the thing to know about turkeys, if you've never cut one up, if you've never eaten a wild turkey, their bones are a lot thinner and a lot longer. Their breast is thinner and longer. They don't have the weight of a domestic turkey. Those turkeys have short bones, thick bones, lots of meat. This guy here, he's got to be able to run and fly. And uh, they're just they're just a more streamlined bird. They have less meat on them. And they're just, just much lighter, you know, constructed than your, your average, you know, supermarket Thanksgiving type turkey. Um, so that bird right there, I'm not going to roast him. What I'm going to do, I'm going to open up the skin. I'm going to flay out the breasts. I'm going to open up the drumsticks. I'm going to flay out the meat on the drumsticks. And, uh, that's gonna give my wife and I four to five meals probably. We'll roast those breasts up, you know, individually. Um, we might make turkey fajitas one night. My wife really enjoys that. So um, none of it's gonna go to waste. And of course, I'll grab some of those feathers. They're just cool to have around. They're good for projects and stuff like that too. So anyway, calling turkeys with your mouth. Um, it's just kind of an offshoot of using a diaphragm call. A diaphragm call looks like this. It's just basically a, a piece of some sort of some sort of canvas material like that, okay? And uh, what's really nice about these, they're a little tricky to use at first, what's nice about them is you can call without moving your body or your hands. You put it in your mouth, go like this. Mm. By the way, I'm not the greatest caller. You don't have to be a great caller. They, they, they're forgiving. They're, they're just looking for a date, okay? Uh, that's it. Less is more. Don't call a ton. Just call a little bit. And uh, just know that there's some factors at play that uh, are very difficult to overcome at times. If a turkey, male turkey, is with hens, He'll be very reluctant to come your way. He's already got a girlfriend. He's not gonna go looking for one behind that bush over there. I don't care how big an experience the birds are, they don't have hens with them. They're fairly easy to pull in, um, provided you can sit still, have a little patience, um, and don't overcall. They're, they're not that tough to call. And a bird that is henned up at dawn, you know, he's got a lot of hens around him. Around noon, he's usually around the same area. The hens have gone to lay their eggs and he finds himself alone. So that's a good tip too. I've, I've killed some big birds early in the morning, but I've killed some really big turkeys after lunch, you know, when they find themselves kind of alone and, uh, and lonely. Now, in this, in my, my chest pack, and I back up here a little bit, I go light. That's where I have all my stuff. This side is, you know, things like my wallet, toilet paper, you never know when you gotta go, um, cell phone, stuff like that. Um, and some extra shells. We'll talk about shells in a second. With some extra shells over there. On this side, I've got my calls, and I've only got three calls. I've got that mouth call. I've got my mouth, which is kind of my preferred call now. And I have this this slate call. It's called a slate call. Um, I've had this call for 25 years. I love this call. It's just a piece of plexiglass mounted in a pan. Super simple. This is called a striker. Let's drag it across there, make it sound like a turkey. Very realistic. Killed many turkeys with this combo right here. The downside of it is you gotta move your hands and you can't hold your gun. This was a no-go today. I would've either had to use my voice or I would've had to use the diaphragm mouth call because I was forced to stand up, which is not optimum, but uh, very doable, but you're not gonna stand up, hold your shotgun and be working something with both hands like that. But those are my two turkey calls that I carry these days. Um, the diaphragm and the striker call. And this is 
this is one more piece of equipment that every turkey hunter needs. You never want to make a turkey sound in the turkey woods until you're ready to shoot. You don't want to just be walking through the woods and go because there might be a turkey up in front of the next bush and he puffs up and gobbles and steps out and says, hey, look at that hunter there. I think I'll fly away. You don't want to do that. The cool thing about turkeys though is you do want to know where the gobbler is to set up on them but they will gobble at a whole bunch of different sounds. They'll gobble at a, at a door slamming, a car door slamming sometimes. They'll gobble at crows and geese and blue jays and coyote howls and owl hoots and all kinds of stuff. That's called a shock gobble. They'll gobble at it, but they won't necessarily come to it or they won't come to it. They'll just fire off and give up their position. So I always carry a crow call. You know, these days I'm, I've got a lot of experience now, so I tend to be a little mellower about my turkey hunting. I use this crow call as my shock call. There's a turkey over there, he's gonna fire off. You're gonna be like, okay, I got an idea. He's over there, I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna set up, then I'm gonna make some hen noises. Um, in terms of setup, it's good to sit down with your back to a tree. Get, if you're right-handed, get your left shoulder aimed at where you think the turkey's gonna come from. You need a face mask, you need gloves, um, and you need to sit very still. It's the main thing. It's easier to call turkeys uphill than down. Got the advantage of being uphill. Um, they can be difficult to call across things like creeks, wire fences. I've had them hang up on one strand of wire that they could hop over. They're weird, they they've got a brain that big. They're wary though, they know they're on the menu. So anyway, that's the only shot call I use these days. Back in, the, back in the day when I was super crazy on turkey hunting, I used to take two weeks off of work. I mean, I was, I was just rabid anal about it. My favorite shot call was a silent dog whistle. Not a cheesy one you get out of a gumball machine, a real one. They're expensive, they cost about 40 bucks and uh, I lost it, but you would just go, and the gobblers would just fire off because they can hear that high frequency sound that we can't hear. But uh, by and large, I, I've never felt shortchanged with my crow call. I always have two or three on hand because they do break and stuff. But uh, that's all I was carrying today. My striker call, my diaphragm, my crow call, which I never used, and uh, just my voice. Um, final thoughts. I'll show you my, my gun. I, I don't like to be flashing guns a whole lot on YouTube here, but uh, nothing fancy. You know, you fancy shotguns are, they're groovy, man, they're fancy. Um, but today I was using my old school 870 Express. Um, it's about 20 years old. I've shot all kinds of birds with it and predators and stuff. Um, it just works. It's about a $250 shotgun. I bought it used, I love this thing. Um, got 984 coats of spray paint on it at this point internally i keep it lubricated um it fires every time i want it to fire um back in the day i used to spend a lot of time shooting shot shells at paper it's called patterning um and different shells and different chokes this is the choke what choke refers to on any shotgun this is a 12 gauge three inch magnum choke is constriction at the, the tip of the bore, okay? And the the trick with a shotgun, especially when you're shooting predators or turkeys, you want all that shot to stay together as long as possible. That's called a tight pattern. Tight pattern enables you to shoot things at longer distances. And that kind of, kind of brings us to the shells I was using. Forever, I used only one shell. I used the Remington Turkey Loads Max Load um, two ounces of number six shot copper plated lead with a buffering compound in it and using that you shouldn't shoot at turkeys over 40 yards I'm gonna say that straight away. I killed turkeys out to like 55 paces with that combo So it's very confident in it um, Hammered a lot of turkeys with it The choke I have in the shotgun right now was designed for shooting heavy shot coyote loads And with those loads you can reach out, you know 50 60 yards and kill a coyote um, but I found that choke to work very well in that shotgun. Well, this year, you can't use lead. You can't use lead anymore. So I bought, I'm a big fan of heavy shot for predators. So I bought a box of these 
these heavy shot three inch magnum loads. Here's the one I shot at that turkey. And these have a combination of number four, five, and six shot in them. I have another box that has five, six, and seven shot. Um, if you're not familiar with, with shot, bigger the number, smaller the size, okay? I really like six for turkeys, but I didn't know what I was gonna encounter in the woods today. So rather than going for the shell that can contain the, the five, six, seven, which would be a denser kind of a shorter range pattern, I w went with one, uh, one, one grade heavier on this shot. I went with the four, five, six to give me a little extra reach. Those larger uh, shot pellets, like the number fives, they'll retain more hitting power at longer range. And I, I had no idea if I would get a shot today, and if I did, how far away the turkey would be. So I went with the, with the combo that I thought would reach out the farthest. And I gotta say, that bird was, couldn't pace it off. He was at 35 to 40 yards when I took the shot. Um, I aimed right where his neck junctioned with his body. And uh, I gotta say, the heavy shot, the performance was impressive. Um, it hit him like a hammer. Um, just knocked him right down. His feet were immediately in the air. His wings were flapping in place. He was dead on arrival. I mean, just that fast. Totally humane. Um, he knew something was up when I made that little noise. But after that, he, uh, he went to the happy hunting ground. He was just done. Um, and that's what you want. You don't want him flopping around. You don't want him running around. You want him dead and uh, that's what that heavy shot load did for me at fairly long range 35 40 yards it's not the longest shot I ever took but it is it is reaching out there a little bit you know I really like 25 yard shots or 20 yard shots um, those are pretty groovy but uh, anyway I have a ton of confidence in these now I didn't pre-pattern it but I have shot this gun and that choke tube a lot with heavy shot with other shells and uh, it patterns really well, so I was super confident in these. Anyway, um, that's what I've been doing today. I didn't go trout fishing. Um, I'm gonna break out my knife. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut that turkey up, and I'm gonna go in and have some coffee. And uh, since most of the lakes are shut down at this point, I expect to be doing a little more turkey hunting here in the not so distant future. So, anyway, I'll probably be back on here again. Hopefully, I'll be back on here again with a turkey or a trout or something like that. If you're looking for fishing gear, you know where to go. Go on over to the Fish Hunt Shoot Productions website. Check out my full line of, uh, of trout fishing gear, my spoons, my soft baits, rods, reels, and more. Um, it's a tackle you see me using on this channel. Uh, we'll sell you a turkey sandwich up there. We won't. But uh, anyway, it's the stuff you see me using on the channel, stuff that I believe in, stuff that I stand behind, and stuff that I offer to you at a very fair price. Anyway, check it out. Please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and you'll know every time I'm on here talking about something on YouTube. Anyway, you guys have a wonderful day. I'm going to chop this turkey up, and I will catch you right here on YouTube next time. I'm Kel Kellogg.